Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, I'll be cutting a groove in a katana. So today, like I said, I'll be cutting a groove or bohi in a katana. If you're not a katana guy, uh, this same process can be used on any kind of blade, whether it's a bowie knife, a saber, whatever. You can also adapt the processes and tools that I'm going to be using here uh, to cut fullers or grooves on double-edged blades like medieval swords, but that's going to take you know some changes in technique, and we're not going to go over that here. All right, so I'll be using several different tools here, a bunch of which I made myself. Uh, I've made videos about a couple of those, so I'll put links to those in the cards and the description. So the blade that I'm going to be working on today is the katana, which of course is the traditional long Japanese sword. As you can see, the one that I'm working on is pretty ugly right now. It hasn't been fully polished yet. So I want to get started on the groove before I've got everything all pretty. Here's where we're eventually going to end up, but we're going to start with a much, much rougher sword. The reason for cutting in the groove at this point is simple. If you screw up in the tiniest way in this process, and that's very easy to do by the way, you can cut a pretty nasty gouge in the blade. So you want to give yourself the best opportunity to fix any goof ups without having to redo enormous amounts of time consuming polishing. So before we get started, let me quickly show you the two main tools we'll use. This is a scraper which is used to cut in the initial groove. It consists of a body, a replaceable cutting head, and a little adjustable guide piece so that the track of the cutter runs straight and parallel to the edge of the blade. I adapted this design from one Jesus Hernandez made who adapted it from somebody else, I forget who. Anyway, the cutter on mine is replaceable, so you can make various sizes and shapes of cutters depending on what kind of grooves you want to cut. The second tool is a sanding device. This one, unlike the cutter, is totally my design. It consists of a body, a handle, and a form. A long strip of sandpaper is stretched over the form so that you can keep feeding in fresh sandpaper as it wears out. Like the scraper, you can replace the form so that you can use the tool for various groove radiuses. In this case, I'll be using a half inch diameter form to match the half inch diameter cutter that I'll be using. I'll also be using some other tools, including some homemade scrapers, some riffler files, EDM stones, and some other stuff. All right, I'll begin by setting up the katana. It's important that it be very firmly set up. So I've got it clamped to this wooden base on this little demo, I'll show the basic idea of the tool before I start cutting on the katana. First, the tool needs to be sharp. I've sharpened mine on a belt grinder with a 600 grit belt. I've also taped three layers of tape on the blade. That's enough that if you jump the track, it'll save you from gouging the blade too badly. This is enough that if your tool jumps the track, and it probably will sometime during this process, it'll save you from gouging the blade too badly. Once you've got the beginning and end set up, you engage the guide on the spine of the blade and then run it down the blade. You don't need to put a lot of pressure on it at first, just enough to keep it from skipping or jumping the track. Putting too much pressure on it dulls the cutter and makes it susceptible to jumping, which is bad. So I'm starting the cut with a quarter inch cutter. That is, it's a quarter inch in diameter. I'll use a half inch diameter cutter later. For whatever reason, my quarter inch cutter cuts way better than my half inch cutter, so I try to do as much work as possible with it. Now, if I were doing a Tonto, I just want to track the edge precisely. But one thing to bear in mind about the Katana, and this is really the whole source of the difficulty of cutting this thing, is that the Shinogi, that's the small bevel here, widens as it approaches the tang. So your bohi should be pretty much centered in that space. Running stem to stern dead parallel to the edge will screw this up because it'll be proportionately closer at the tang and farther away at the tip and that'll look awful. As a result, I'll do this in 8 to 10 inch sections marked off here with a pen. With each section, I'll adjust the guide just a minute amount so that I'm incrementing that cutter in just a slight amount. 
Hey guys, let me jump in real quick to say if you like what I do in this and my hundreds of other videos, I hope you'll help support me on Patreon. Now plans for most of my blade builds are available on Patreon to supporters of the channel. So links in the cards in the description or you can go to patreon.com forward slash Walter Sorrels. All right, back into it. Because the cutter tracks that back edge, the ends of each section won't be exactly, exactly centered on the shinogi. So eventually I'll be blending them together stage by stage to try and get them exactly centered. I'm just taking my time. I've got maybe 75 or 100 hours of labor invested in this sword already, so it's worth taking my time and avoiding screw-ups. Like I say, don't bully the cutter. Just let it do the work with your hands supplying a little motion, a little stabilization, and a little weight so it won't jump the track. So a quick digression about geometry. We're using round stock for our cutter bits. They're made with a back face that's ground at an angle. If you grind precisely at a 45 degree angle, you'll get a precisely round cutting face that's exactly the same diameter as the diameter of your cutting tool. If, however, you cut it at either a shallower or a more acute angle, that will cause you to cut an elliptical gully, not a round gully. And that'll mean that you can't polish it as efficiently with a round polishing tool like the one that I'm using. So, if you make a tool like this, make sure that the cutter is ground to exactly a 45 degree angle. Once I've got a decent track, I'll take off the guide and start cutting freehand. Now I'm blending all these sections together and cutting all the way down. Once you take that guide off, you have to be a lot more careful because it's very easy to jump the track and gouge the blade. Of course, I've never done this myself. Here you're trying to blend everything and get the track centered from end to end. This means you have to apply a little side pressure in certain areas to move the track sideways. And that's actually the point where it's easiest to jump the tool out of the groove. Now if I were doing a Tonto, which conventionally have fairly thin grooves, I'd do the whole shebang with the quarter inch cutter. But Katanas typically have wider bohees requiring a wider cutter. So once I've got a nice smooth and reasonably deep track, I'll switch over to this a half inch cutter, which will give me a more correctly sized groove. My half inch diameter cutter is considerably harder to use. It chatters worse, it cuts worse, and it has to be resharpened a little more often. But I just keep plugging away and eventually the job gets done. Important note, because the blade tapers, the groove has to taper too, and do so in proportion to the taper of the blade. Otherwise, it'll look like ass. Eventually, you'll have the whole thing cut, except for the ends, which will be rough. We'll sort that out in a minute. First, I'll switch over to my polishing tool and start polishing. Now, I could wait to do this until I get the ends of the bohe shape properly. Doesn't really matter, but in this case, I want to make sure that the flow of the grooves looks right before I commit myself to the ends. You can see in this sequence of shots how I slowly eliminate the scratch and chatter marks from the scraper until I have a nice clean groove with no evidence left from the scraper. Okay, let's turn to the tip section. At this point, it's really rough and sort of bullet shaped. Traditionally on katanas, however, the point is shaped off center to roughly follow the taper of the shinogi. I use layout fluid to mark the general shape I'm aiming for, like so. This part, to put it mildly, is a pain in the neck. There's just no easy way to do it. I'll use a couple of scrapers I constructed out of worn out carbide end mills. I'm pushing the tool at an angle, which helps me get the shape I'm aiming for. This part is even slower and more painstaking than cutting the main groove.
For the final push, I'll use Riffler files to shape everything nice and cleanly. Once again, we'll pretty things up as best we can with the polishing tool. I say as best I can because some of this is just completely inaccessible to the tool because the radius changes at this little tip point. So I'll resort to using these little abrasives called EDM stones. I start with 120 grit stones, then move to 220 and then 320. You can also use Japanese water stones at this point if you want. Suppliers of Japanese polishing equipment will sell little pieces of water stone that are intended for polishing out grooves. Now it's time to turn to the end of the groove nearest the tang. Sometimes these grooves will run all the way down into the tang, and sometimes they'll terminate above the junction with the tang. I've chosen to end mine above the tang. Typically this end will terminate with a rounded face, whereas the ones below tend to be more that sort of bullet shape. You can accomplish this manually using the same tools I just showed. In this case though, I'll demonstrate a non-manual approach. Here I've set the sword up on my mill, and I'll be cleaning out that last inch or so with a half inch ball end mill, which will precisely match the radius of the rest of the groove. Then it's back to the workbench where I'll blend the two sections with the scraper, then polish away just like I did the last section. Again, I'll use both EDM stones and my polishing gizmo. Once I've got the whole groove evened up, I'll flip the blade over and repeat the process on the other side. And here's what it looks like when the whole thing is completely polished. Thanks for watching guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!